Please rise. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first uh, item on the agenda, the announcements, acceptance of a donation from the Rivertown's Lions Club. Um, this is to the Irvington Police Department. Uh, this has to be about the, they've done it for at least the last decade. I yeah. Think. Um, but uh, yeah, I it remember. helps uh, fund our DARE project. And we, uh, we thank them very much for their continued generosity. They do it in conjunction with the Officer of the Year Award, which, who is the Officer of the Year? Uh, Dave Walsh. Dave Walsh. Dave Walsh. Dave Walsh was the Officer of the Year. I, I actually couldn't go this year because we found out the day after it was happening. So, But I did call him that day. I, I, actually, we Facebook, Facebook messaged uh, congratulating uh, Officer Walsh. Um, next uh, announcement is that Celebrate Irvington will be on Saturday, June 23rd, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 5, 5 p.m., rain or shine. Um, I know from my schedule that day, it's a very busy, packed day. Yes. Uh, do you want to give a couple little tidbits, uh, Connie? Uh, well, um, the, the history part I will tell you about. There is the trolley, as there has been for the last five years, and that always fills up. So the trolley is going to run. Um, you can get the specifics when the schedule becomes available but basically through the afternoon. And we will be um, reenacting life in 1781. And we will have historic reenactors from New York um, military units. So we'll learn about camp life and the women who supported those um, that camp life and Brian's busy day will include that. And there's actually going to be a ribbon cutting now, too. But, uh, top of yeah, the, so there's the uh, ribbon cutting, the, then there's the, the DSA, DSA. Yes. And then there's the. Yes. Well, I'm not really doing it for the encampment, I guess, right? So. Right. <laughs> but there'll be many other the things the, with them. The stand block party starts at 5 30 that day. And okay. You're welcome to I appreciate that. that. Oh. What, what happens if I miss it? The Aspire Block Party. Oh, comes. right. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe we can all. Uh, Crawl through the culverts. BYOB. BYOB. We're going to close that road or anything? I'll, I'll supply it. Okay. I'll try to make it by if I'm still standing after that big day. Um, next item is a check over $25,000 for our policy. Uh, it was for the Wolpert, or paid to the Wolpert Law Firm, which was from a tertiary refund for Riverhouse Condominium. It was the amount of $30,131.32. Next uh, is a public hearing to consider a local law amending the zoning code with respect to garages, June 18th, 2018, at 7 p.m. at Village Hall. I will actually, did you want to give a yeah, just brief explanation? Yeah, briefly so people understand. Right now, the way the zoning code is written, garages can only be used for the storage of automobiles, nothing else. Um, one of the recommendations of the comprehensive and update committee was to broaden the uses in appropriate cases. And so um, right now the um, um, garage is added as an accessory use along with a guard house, tool house, play house, or garage. So it isn't limited only to, um, uh, off to, to par a parking facility. And then there's a separate accessory uh, use added in that top street parking facilities. And then the other change is to the um, uh, accessory apartment law. Now it says that accessory apartments would be permitted in garages. Again, not just any garage. It has to be, you know, building code and everything else. But, but at the moment, it's not allowed in the code. This report, and that's what this change does. It also changes a little bit the definition of our buildings because just as a technicality, it said before a garage is not an outbuilding because that was a, refer a reference to the accessory, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the accessory apartment law. But anyway, so essentially it's just about permitting accessory apartments in garages, assuming they meet the um, building mm -hmm. code. Okay, so I'll make a motion to have a public hearing to consider a local law amending the zoning code with respect to garages to be held on June 18, 2018 at 7 p.m. here in Village Hall. If I can get a second. Same. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the mobile shredder will be here on Sunday, June 10, 2018 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. outside of Village Hall. Uh, I think there's there's usually some rules. It can't be like business. You know, it has to be it's uh, personal, personal yes. uh, shredding. But it's a great way to uh, cut down on 
potential for uh, identity theft and all those good things. So um, <laughs> is there more information on the website? There's an announcement there, yes. So you can see the announcement on the uh, on the on the website, um, irvingtonny.gov. In case you haven't been paying attention at home, uh, third annual student PSA video contest. The deadline for submissions is June 10th. Details are at Slow Down Irvington uh, Facebook page. Um, there are cash prizes, and you can also come use the shredder on the 10th. Um, Cars, if you don't win, if you don't win. <laughs> Correspondence, uh, there was none. Since no one is in attendance in person, public comment, there is none. Uh, the consent agenda, does anyone have any uh, questions on those two items? Otherwise, I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda, if I can get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next is approval of a stipulation of agreement. Um, this is a, a labor matter, matter that was handled with our labor council, appropriately enough. Um, you, you have a copy there of the stipulation. I apologize for giving it to you at the last minute, but the um, I think I explained the terms and conditions and what the understanding of it was uh, previous to that. Uh, but the, the agreement does require the approval of the Board of Trustees in order to ratify it, in order to be effective. Yeah, I think we... Uh we had the information on the, the, the yeah. content of it beforehand. Exactly, yeah. Yep. Are there any questions on that? I mean, yeah, I have to imagine it's a fairly, a fairly uh, standard stipulation of agreement and release, obviously with the details that are uh, pertinent to this individual. Yep. So if there are any questions, I will commence reading. Resolved to approve the stipulation of agreement and release dated May 29, 2018 by and among the Village of Irvington, James Marski, and the CSEA, Inc. I'll make a motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is approval for general release and assignment with Capital Indemnity Corporation. Larry? Um, so this, and actually Mary Ann can chime in as well, but uh, this uh, settlement and release, uh, release and assignment, I guess it's titled, is uh, relates to the firehouse roof project. Uh, it's it's a uh, transaction with the, the bond company, the performance bond company, uh, who agreed with our village attorney that the amount um, to repair and continue and complete the roof from where it is now exceeds the amount of the performance bond, which was $123,000. So they agreed with that. Uh, it took a little time on our side to get some information about that, but uh, Marianne handled the negotiations uh, with their council. And uh, so they will be making that payment. We still are now and will be responsible for completing the roof from here forward. So that's also in the works. I'm sorry, you were responsible for what? Completing the roof. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, Justin, the bond, yeah, there was a limit on the performance bond of $123,000, which was the bid, and they did give us the, the, whole amount. the full amount of that. Um, and there were a, a couple of things we had to hammer out and release uh, some carve-outs, because there's a general language that might have precluded us from collecting on a payment bond, uh, with this also with capital, so we have a carve-out for that. And, um, and it also wanted us to assign all, um, all claims we might have against uh, Cool any insurance company. And um, I pointed out that, well, we might have claims related to damage inside the building, which had nothing to do with, with their work, you know, with the um, part of the performance bond. And so then there's a, there's a carve out for that, which we, we, he just said this morning. Yeah, that's says excluded is any claim of the village of Irvington arising from any claim of property damages or losses of life methods of performance. So it's a fair release and assignment, and my recommendation is that uh, you approve it and have Larry sign it. Um, Do we have new estimates? No, we're working. Well, we, yes, we, we, we did get revised bids. Um, they're up How else would, would we know that it's going right. to cost us a dollar? Right, um, but we're, we're not. We're really not satisfied with those, so we've engaged or will be considering engaging the services of a construction manager. I'll be reporting that back to you at an appropriate time soon. Uh, but the plan is to, uh, to have someone um, that we trust working close with us 
to manage the construction and the contracts that may be let in order to finish this. But I'll go into much more detail than that um, with the board at the appropriate time. Okay. Very good. Result authorize the village administrator to execute the general release and assignment with Capital Indemnity Corporation, subject to the final approval of the village attorney. I'll make a motion if I get a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, next is a resignation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, resolved to accept or regret the resignation of Thomas E. Willoughby from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the, Tom's been uh, on the board for a, for a while, um, and, and uh, we're definitely going to miss him. And now we have to find someone else to replace him as well. But we'd like to thank him for his service and uh, accept with regret. I'll make the motion. I get a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And um, good news, some people who appoint to the Green Policy Task Force. <clears throat> Resolved to appoint the following volunteer members to the Green Policy Task Force with the term to expire December 2018. Jessica Munzel, Sophia Batakis, and Nicole Radler, Radlauer. Um, I'll make the motion if I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And more good news, um, <laughs> resolved to approve the following new probationary member of the Arrington Fire Company, Jacob Stiberski, who is also known as Revenge Barbecue. Yeah, I don't mind <laughs> leaving too, too often. <clears throat> his, his one problem is he can never smell smoke, and so he always does. <laughs> but uh, I will make the motion if I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Appointment of assistant court clerk. Not really, well, I guess it is an appointment, but it's uh, same person, different title. Yeah, same person, um, no no change in pay from what you approved um, back on effective June 1st. Uh, but this is reflective of this individual uh, passing her assistant court clerk test and now being appointed to that title. So she was working in a, a role similar to that before, but um, this puts her in the right position. Cool. Uh, be resolved that Donna Fusco is hereby appointed to the position of assistant court clerk, effective June 6, 2018, at an annual salary of $70,366, subject to completion of a probationary period of not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. I'll make a motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Reward of, I'm sorry, award of contract for 2018-09 for the Riverview Road Booster Pump Station project. Larry? Yeah, so, I mean, I can't go into the technical aspects of this project. What I can tell you is that there's a need to uh, make, make repairs to a pump station that's it's, uh, it's actually located um, on the north side of Riverview Road. By the exit of Abbott House. Right by the back entrance of the Abbott House. There's a kind of an underground vault there, partially yeah. underground, right? <clears throat> and uh, you probably, some people don't even probably pay attention to it. I had no it. idea what it was until Jimmy told me. But the equipment in there needs to be uh, repaired and uh, replaced. And yeah, it's from like the 60s, and it's really inefficient, and there's no way to, to power it during power outages because there's no way to plug in like a generator to it or anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's an important project that, that uh, Jim Englishby had identified, and uh, he's, you know, carrying out his plan to get this stuff yeah, I think it was a little more expensive, maybe thirty thousand dollars more expensive than we'd hoped. Yeah, but I think we're we're gonna we'll take a look at the budget and see see how we can work that out. So we'll we'll make a recommendation on it. But I think that's important that the project yes. get moving forward. It's a pretty competitive bidding. Process. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was clean bid. Terrytown, that's nice. It's my old office in Terrytown. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whereas two bids were received for contract twenty eighteen oh nine. There's only two, or there four. Oh, there, there should be four. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Apologize for <laughs> Yep. See, I've said what intention in detail on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a number. Four, right? four bids were received for contract 2018-09 for the Riverview Road Booster Pump Station. This project as follows. King's Capital Construction Group, $194,700. Foremost Development, LLC, $224,360. Legacy Supply, LLC, $229,111. Adventus Construction Company, Inc., $262,000. Whereas the village administrator reviewed the bid submitted and determined that the lowest bidder is in order and response to the specifications. Now, therefore, be it resolved to award contract 2018-09 for the Riverview Road Booster Pump Station project in the amount of $194,700 to King's Capital Construction Group, Inc. And to authorize the village administrator to execute said contract. I will make a motion if I can get a second. Second. All in favor. 
Approval of contract 2018-15 with Garden State Fireworks for a fireworks display. This is always uh, yeah, my, my favorite documents to peruse through. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of an explanation you need. <laughs> same price as last year. the grand finale. It's the same. It's the same basic presentation. Same contract. It's uh, it's the same. Same as a winner. It's Assorted like a, it's fancy color and reports. Sixty. I love it. It's uh, the names are fantastic. <laughs> the only thing that's maybe a, a little bit unusual is that the because uh, July Fourth is a Wednesday. Um, it's really not terribly advisable to have a rain date be the Thursday, um, kind of a midweek thing, not really a holiday anymore. Uh, so I think the, the anticipation is that that would be then moved to the coincide with the Rocktoberfest. Sure. If, if there's a rain oh, out, okay. oh, yeah. it, it would be moved to Rocktoberfest weekend. It has been discussed with Face and everyone seems That to came from them, didn't yeah. come from me. <laughs> so, well, I don't know about Face. I'm sorry. I, I, that, I, that part I don't came know. Joe. So I think Joe. Sure Which Joe. I think is reflective of our pack. So, yeah. I can, I'll, I'll follow up with Joe just to be sure. Well, sure. <clears throat> okay. Right. Results approved contract 2018 15 with Garden State Fireworks Inc. for a fireworks display on July 4th, 2018, and authorize the village administrator to execute the contract. I'll make a motion if I can have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a date for Rocktoberfest already? Yes. Oh, okay. It's actually September, though. Yeah, I'll give you the it's date. It's the last weekend of September, so maybe we want to change that on the uh, contract last The contract says October. It says October. Oh, okay. Oh, just September because 29th. it oh, says okay. Octoberfest. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I well, think fine. it's in October. It's so September 29th. Yeah, that's fine. Reasonable. Reasonable. We can make that change. It's a, we have that draft, so. Cool. Yep. So it's the Saturday, the last Saturday in September. Correct. Okay. Because we didn't want to overlap with uh, Ferry Fest, which was the first weekend in October, and Oktoberfest actually starts in September in Germany. So oh. we're being so we're still being active. No. <laughs> uh, approval to join the Workers' Compensation Alliance. Is this a Star Wars thing, there? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Brenda to speak up on this one, but. <laughs> <laughs> this has to do with the uh, changing of insurance carriers for workers' compensation. If you recall, during budget time, uh, we had uh, some bids from uh, other companies that provide uh, similar services and decided to change from PERMA to workers' comp alliance. So this is giving you authorization to join them. I can sign those documents um, effective June 1st. And this is a uh, second um, authorization requested. Uh, it's for self-insurance. What this is really just doing is acknowledging that it is a self-insurance policy insofar as if our experience goes up, that we have incidences of workers' comp, it will be reflected in the rates. And it was the same way with the previous carrier. Okay. Any other questions? Whereas the Village of Irvington is eligible for membership in the plan, and whereas the Village of Irvington has made an independent investigation of the plan and reviewed the plan document, and has concluded that it would be in the interest of the Village of Irvington to participate therein, now therefore be it resolved that the Village of Irvington enter into a membership in the plan pursuant to Section 50, Subdivision 3A of the Workers' Compensation Law, and be it further resolved that the Clerk Treasurer be and hereby is authorized and instructed to execute the plan's charter document on behalf of the Village of Irvington, and be it further resolved that the custody of all joint plan monies by the plan administrator under the plan be and the same hereby yes. is... I took it from them, yeah. Okay. And, and be and They're the in. same hereby is... <laughs> Weird we, we can modify it. And that's fine. I kind of wrote it the way they... <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason why it reads funny. Uh, I'll make a motion. If I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Uh, approval of workers' compensation self-insurance. I think she already explained that. So read it. Go ahead and read okay. If you, yeah, you might as well go right on. Don't you have any questions, of course. I don't have any questions. Have any questions. <laughs> Resolved that the Village of Irvington hereby elects, pursuant to subject Division 3A of Section 50 of the Workers' Compensation Law, to become a self-insurer as to workers' compensation claims against the municipality, and be it further resolved that pursuant to Section 50, Subdivision 1A of said workers' compensation law, notice of such election shall be filed within, filed, filed forthwith the chairman of the workers' compensation board, self-insurance section, and be it further resolved 
that this election shall be effective on June 1st, 2018. I'll make a motion. I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of a revised investment <laughs> policy. Uh, what I'm asking here is authorization to open an account with Sterling National Bank and the Westchester Bank. Um, and the reason for doing this is to expand the number of banks that we're doing business with to get more competition and getting a better return of our um, interest rates, our investments. And that's all we have is that the yield to improve the yield on our excess money. So I'm able to go to more banks, and also they'll participate when we um, have our van sale. Mm -hmm. That one actually matters. Interest rates are actually going up. <clears throat> So how many banks do we have official relationships? Um, the primary bank is Chase Bank, and then we have, um, I think, three other banks, actually. Because TD Bank, Webster Bank. Yeah, those are the ones I remember. Is, is there any disadvantage to having, you know, can you have too many banks? Like, uh, like having too many credit cards? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, there are, Compensating balances involved where it kind of offsets fees. So if you have to the extent that you have lots of accounts There could be higher fees. It's the, the type of usage that Brenda has with village funds is really uh, Mostly limited to single investments like a like a certificate of deposit, you know, so so we're not talking about fees involved with that There may be there may be some accounts, but there but the, the main transaction accounts are all with JP Morgan Chase We don't write checks from them it's yeah. strictly uh, a wire in and let's say a wire out um, for investment. For investment. Oh, yeah. But if you had, you know, 50, 50 checking accounts, yeah, that, that, that'd be kind of waste, we wasteful. Actually, we only, with, we actually, we only use one um, account for withdrawals for checking. All of those are the same check. Right. Resolved to approve the revised village investment policy to expand the list of banks authorized for deposits to include Sterling National Bank, limit of $4 million, the Westchester Bank, limit of $4 million. I'll make the motion. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor. Approval right. contract 2018-16 for Farmers Market Management Services. My quick perusal looked the same as last year. Yeah, I believe so. The, this is uh, for the manager that, that assists the Farmers Market Committee with running the market, pulling the vendors together, setting fees, collecting fees, all of that uh, administrative work associated with it, as well as carrying out the policy of the market uh, in terms of uh, the types of vendors that they have and, and maybe even... Visiting the farms. And the yeah, farms. exactly, verifying things. So, Otherwise, it's the same. No questions. Uh, Resolved to approve contract 2018-16 with Pascal Le Drulac for Farmers Market Management Services and their authorized ability administrator to execute the contract. I'll make the motion if I get a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Approval of contract 2018-16 for Farmers Market. Oh, that, that one already. <laughs> Authorization to approve change order number three for the Old Crow and Aqueduct Trailways project, which was 2017-10. So th this. Uh, this change order, which um, which totals uh, a little over eighty-seven hundred dollars, is is not for any fundamental change in the project itself. Uh, it really is a kind of a cleanup of some of the uh, course of events that happened between the fall and the spring with this project. Uh, if you recall, we had to put the project on hold because of a Con Edison potential installation of a Con Ed gas main, replacement of a gas main on Main Street, which would have undermined the brand new crosswalk and maybe the paving if we had paved already. Um, so the, the contract was put on hold. Um, we then came up with, since Con Ed hasn't done their work uh, and we don't know when they will, we came up with installing a, a sleeve underneath the new crosswalk so that when it does come time, Con Ed can go through and under the crosswalk without having to rip it up. Um, but that work costs really cool. cost a little extra money, so then that's what you see there. And there's, and there's a few other items uh, kind of related to that. Um, the, uh, the contractor had to come back out again at, at our request because they couldn't complete the gas main sleeve work back in the fall. They had to come back out in April, so there's a remobilization charge to bring all their equipment back out and get going and 
So that was all negotiated through our engineer who, you know, I mean, they didn't, the contractor didn't get everything they asked for, but it certainly shouldn't be zero. So there is a payment that's due. Um, and the same thing goes for the, for the paving. We expected to pave in April. And if you remember, it was the first, roughly the first week in April when the schools were closed. And uh, the two days that we had available for paving, one of them it rained, and the other, the temperature got above 40 degrees for only about an hour or two during the day. And it, it, the engineer said, we can't do it. It's too, it's too cold. Um, but the contractor had all their paving equipment out there, and they were ready to pave, and they couldn't. So, And then the window was closed after that. So that's the type of thing, you know, this is after the fact cleanup work, but it's... Uh, it's that's what happens when you have a delay in schedule like that, just from a little gas main. But it, it was. Thank you, Colonel. Yeah, thanks, Scott. We wouldn't even know about it. My favorite part. Right, the, 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 the school. The school told, told us. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Results approved change order number three for Con Ed Gasly remobilization and asphalt subcontractor mobilization by Tony Casal Inc related to the old Croton Aqueduct Trailway Project in the amount of $8,737.90, and to authorize the village administrator to execute said change order. I'll make a motion if I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Reports of boards, standing committees, and officers. Trustee, trustee liaison reports. Joe said he had a lot. I was going to say, Joe's report is longer than I need. <laughs> I'll edit. <laughs> uh, but a couple of things happened just recently this past weekend. Over 80 children from 3 to 8th grade boys and girls were at the annual Rec and Parks Donna Jake Way Ballet and Dance Recital. Special thanks to Marie Napoli and her staff. The shows were amazing. We're also grateful to Greg Allen and Larry Alexander for allowing us to use the theater. The Irvington Woods Committee would like to thank everyone who joined us on Sunday night at the Ohio Nature Center for a fun night. The grounds really did look beautiful, and the gardens were, were really mm -hmm. phenomenal. Uh, summer day camp registration continues. Teenscape is ready to roll. Starts on Monday, June 25th. Park permits are available. Proof of residency is required. Kayak rack rentals are available. Through the rec, contact Mike DiNardo. Tennis court lights are on till 10 p.m. every night. Park permits are required. Um, fireworks on July 4th. Eileen Fisher will hold their annual company picnic Wednesday, June 27th at Scenic Hudson. CAB will have their last public meeting of the year on Tuesday, June 12th, 8 a.m. at the Senior Citizen Center. The seniors will have their annual summer picnic on Thursday, June 28th at Scenic Hudson. The annual youth baseball picnic is scheduled for next Tuesday, Memorial Park from 5 to 7. Um, after this, the River Spring Hebrew Home softball team is playing against the Boomer Siason and FAN radio at Cedar Hudson Park. And Saturday, June 16th is packed at Matheson Park. It will be high school graduation along with the rescheduled PBA sleepover in the evening. That's enough. Um, I'd also like to add to the recreation report and say that Scenic Hudson looks gorgeous. It's really, the grass is so beautiful and the shade. I know they've lost trees and all during some of the storms, but it's beautiful. Um, uh, and uh, my theater report is a very special report um, because our very own Mayor Smith and his lovely wife Kira were honored by the resident group, the Clock Towers. Um, and I understand it was a lovely event. Um, Glad that they were doing that and honoring our mayor and his lovely wife. <laughs> um, the Historic District Committee um, is working on what they're calling their basically their final report on the work that they've done over the last seven years, um, and they are um, communicating about that. But they they do expect to continue as in an advisory way for some things that you know really don't ever end. Um, and uh, in terms of um, the farmer's market, I think you all know that the farmer's market is now on Sundays outdoors. So um, that goes on through November. And um, the, in terms of the downtown, um, 
it's essentially the new Chamber of Commerce who, who is running and organizing most of Celebrate Irvington. So the history report, I, you know, I expect they'll come in one day and uh, report on some of the other activities and then before this all happens. But they're, you know, in the school, I think, Brian, you mentioned that the ribbon cutting is happening that day for the school's playground. So that's my report. Oh, yes, there's something from Greg. I'm sorry. Um, highway Department. Um, they assisted on the Memorial Day ceremonies um, and uh, cleaning up after two severe thunderstorms. Uh, they assisted the Water Department with three water main breaks. Oh, yeah, Harriman Road. Some of you know that, right? Harriman Road, Bridge Street, and the Metro North parking lot. Mm -hmm. Repaired, uh, replaced broken sidewalks on South Ferris Street. I know that. Uh, they did more line painting, assisted the Parks Department with moving, hauling materials, and filling potholes. That's it. Nothing coming up. Village Administrator's report. Uh, nothing tonight. Village Clerk Treasurer's report. <laughs> and Village Attorney's report. Just to ask um, for a brief advice of council session yet for today's meeting. And since there is no public in attendance, we will not have any public comment. Review of action items. Um, I mean, the only one was a question about face and the fireworks, but if you think that's covered. Well, I've gotten a confirmation that it's been approved by Brian, <laughs> along with Bob. Fine, so yes. I don't need to Perfect. follow up on that. Okay, then that's it. You follow the after Larry. It's yeah. fine. I'm a little late to the game. Okay. No, Remember we talked about it. I got a text to prove it. Oh, good. No, I don't, you don't have to prove it to me. <laughs> you asked the question. <laughs> really, I already approved it. Uh, then I will make a motion to adjourn if I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed?